And good morning to you on live stream who join us as well. We appreciate your fellowship with us this morning. <clears throat> I would like to start the day off by reading something out of uh, the book of Revelation in chapter 5, verse 1. And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book, written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in the earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. <clears throat> See, this book is authored by God. It's written within and without. <clears throat> it contains his very purpose, what he is going to do concerning his church. This strong angel makes this proclamation with a loud voice, searching who could open up this book. Certainly someone is able to open the book. And we live in a generation <clears throat> where it's common, especially in this generation, for people to be content in their ignorance of God. But this is not the norm. This condition is not a normal condition. It is not normal for anyone to be content not to know about God or what He is about to do. If you're in that state this morning, get out of that state. There's grace to get out of that state. You will never be at a point in this side or in the other where you will be satisfied with what you already know about God, and you will never have, you'll never not have the need to seek to know more about Him. <clears throat> Even though here on earth this abnormality exists in some places, you can be sure that this does not exist in heaven. The angels desire very much to look into the things of God and to our great salvation that he's working on the earth. You can be sure that all of heaven longed and yearned to find the one who could open the scroll. How great the shout went out from that angel. A strong angel. Probably a representative of all the angels. Certainly the heaven shook with the sound. Who is able to open the book? But no one could be found. John wept. No one could see any further into God's purpose. It's God's purpose, His determination, that He's determined from everlasting to everlasting. It's not just a book, it is the book. No one was able to open the book. Now, interestingly enough, there are books written by men in our day to fill the bookstores to the ceiling that all claim to know the secrets of the future. And as seemingly convincing as some of them may be, none of them can hold any authoritative truth outside of what has already been written and revealed by Jesus Christ. If Michael the archangel could not open the book, and Gabriel could not open the book, what makes men think that they all by themselves can open the scroll? John the Baptist was, Jesus said, of, of those that were born among women, there hasn't risen a greater than John the Baptist, right? If he couldn't open the book, what makes men think that all by themselves that they can open the book? See, the scroll could not be opened because of strength. So, Michael couldn't open up the book. See, neither could wisdom open up the book. So they go to Solomon. Solomon couldn't open up the book. Abraham couldn't open up the book. Uh, Paul, Peter, John picked the best of humanity and they couldn't open the book. It appeared as if all hope was lost, but it wasn't. Our God was not content either to keep his purpose to himself. God, but, see, but God is righteous. It has to be right for God to reveal his purpose to his creation. It looked like all hope was lost. But look! The lion! The lion from the tribe of Judah! He's prevailed over the enemy! He's prevailed! He is worthy to open up the book! He can open up the book! Jesus can open up the book! And it's not because he's just strong or wise, but because he's worthy! 
Jesus deserves to open up the book. Amen. It's right for God to reveal his purpose to Jesus. Amen. Jesus is worthy because he's the only one who prevailed. He prevailed over the devil. Amen. He's the one who led captivity captive. Amen. The one who captured us, he captured him. Amen. He's worthy. He spoiled principalities and powers openly. He destroyed the one who had the power of death. But now Jesus has the keys to death and hell. He's got them now. He's worthy. He himself has tasted death for every man. He satisfied God. He deserves to open this book. He is the only one who's done these things. And so he is worthy. And trust me, brethren, you want to be around the one who is worthy to open the book. Amen. See, if it weren't for Jesus, no one would know anything about the purpose of God. Yeah. No one would know. But now we're able to know. A person only knows what God is doing, to go, what is, God is going to do as much as they know Jesus. Right. So today I want us to set our attention on knowing Him, on learning Christ. Today I would like to call you to walk worthy of your calling. It's a high calling. It's, it proceeds from the purpose that God has purposed in himself. And this is, ties in with what we were talking about this morning with Brother Rob's lesson. That he's purposed this in himself, and we're a part of that. Amen. Today, I want us to set our attention on knowing him. For this calls also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Amen. This is part of this purpose that he's revealing to us. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The one who's worthy to open the book lives in us, brethren. We put to death the flesh, we abide in him. We crucify the flesh with its affections and lusts. As it says, whoever loves son or daughter more than him is not worthy of him. If Christ lives in you, you are worthy too before God. No matter what your situation is, <clears throat> you will overcome if you look to Jesus, the one who has prevailed. He said, thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, even in Sardis, yeah which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. So no, it doesn't matter where, 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 you're, where you're at, what your situation is, there's grace to get out of certain kinds of situations, but when we walk with Christ, we are worthy. I praise God that the lion from the tribe of Judah has prevailed over the enemy in the darkest and most dire of circumstances with all odds stacked against him. When all hope seemed lost, Jesus rose up triumphant over the enemy. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night, brethren, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. He has redeemed us with his blood out of every tribe and nation, and he is worthy. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful that you sent your Son, that you made a way for us to be included in your purpose and to know of you. Lord, we know that this would be impossible without you doing this, and we're thankful for it. We're thankful for the gift of your Son, and we're thankful that he was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, Lord, that he is worthy to open up the book. I pray that the words that are spoken up here today would direct our minds to your Son, Christ Jesus and that we might know him. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.